Well, hi guys, this is Jim, and I'm in Texas on Nameless Road near uh, Leander. I'm going to go back there and look at some of those houses up there. Some of them look pretty nice. The purpose of this uh, video is to, is to be a little book review of the audio version of the book uh, Manhunt, The Ten-Year Hunt for Bin Laden by New York Times reporter Peter L. Bergen. This book uh, is just what it says. It's a, a high-level, very high-level review of, uh, of how the United States uh, eventually tracked down bin Laden. It starts with the history of uh, our interactions with bin Laden. Uh, those of you who were here around at the time may remember uh, uh, we had a couple of embassies uh, blown up in Africa. We sent a cruise missile out there, didn't really hurt anybody who needed to be hurt. Uh, the uh, Osama organized uh, the attack on the destroyer Cole, uh, which darn near sunk and killed a bunch of American sailors. Uh, he was apparently involved in the first uh, car bombing of the World Trade Center and then later uh, was the, the principal uh, planner, or not necessarily planner, but the principal uh, organizer of the uh, attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon on uh, September 11, 2001. So that, uh, we were already looking, President uh, Clinton and uh, had uh, had been looking for uh, uh, bin Laden for years and then of course uh, eight months into his term 9-11 happens and uh, killing Osama became a high priority with President Bush and that continued with President Obama up until spring of uh, 2011 when he was finally tracked down and killed by Navy SEALs. Uh, the book is a fascinating book. Uh, in another segment I I'm going to review uh, the book uh, No Easy Day by one of the SEALs who uh, participated in a raid and that's like a, a grunt level view of how the raid went. This is like a super high level view of the raid. Uh, Mr. Bergen, as a New York Times reporter, had access to President Bush, President Clinton, and President Obama, apparently extensive access to Obama himself. Secretary Clinton is quoted extensively in the book. Uh, uh, CIA directors are in there, uh, Secretary of Defense, senior military officers, senior intelligence officers of all kinds are, are interviewed and quoted in this book. The book tells you a lot about bin Laden, about uh, how he uh, managed to evade us for so long. Uh, a lot of what I would consider to be sensitive sources and methods are revealed in this book, and that was real disappointing. Uh, there's a lot in there that doesn't need to be in there, that didn't need to be in this book. Uh, I'll give you one example since it's in the book. One of the... Uh, Bin Laden wound up living in this walled compound in the city of uh, Abbottabad in uh, Pakistan, which is sort of a resort city, 6,000 feet elevation, uh, kind of like Colorado Springs or somewhere like that, on the edge of a, a pretty good sized city in a fairly upscale neighborhood. Uh, and uh, he lived in this, this compound was a little unusual because uh, it had 18-foot walls. Uh, the people in it were very reclusive. There were families living in there, kids, women and kids, and several men living in there. They, the neighbors kind of knew that, but they didn't interact with people. Uh, and there was no telephone service and no internet service to this. And uh, uh, one thing the book says that I think could have gone unsaid was very little cell phone service. There's this hi, Sheriff. Uh, very little cell phone service uh, in and out of this. They, and he talks a lot about monitoring cell phones, and I wish he hadn't done that. Uh, he talks about some other sensitive stuff in there. He talks about the RQ-170 drone. Of course, yeah, Iran got a hold of it eventually, but why, why, uh, why provide radar cross-section data about that to the Pakistanis, which is basically what he did by describing where it was orbiting during the raid. Uh, yeah, but anyway, he does a great job of, of, of telling, the, kind of explaining the trail that Bin Laden left and how they want, finally 
figured out that he was probably in this compound. Uh, of course, they had uh, lots of uh, overhead and methods to watch this compound for both uh, from uh, airborne vehicles and satellites. And they knew that there's a tree in the compound in a little yard. Most of the compound had a patio. The patio had a tarp over it or something. But the wall, the windows in this compound were opaque. So you couldn't see through the windows. Uh, and like I say, 18-foot walls all the way around it with concertina wire on the top. That's a fairly common in that part of the world, but you know that huge wall is not. Concrete block plastered over like you see it in flat roofs, like you see it in the Middle East all the time. But pretty impressive structure, several hundred thousand dollars. Howdy hearty guys. Uh, they did observe a, a guy who would pace around a tree in the yard for like a couple hours a day sometimes. They called him the pacer. But they can never get a really good look at him to say for sure he was Obama. They eventually, they found this compound for a couple of different ways, but mainly there was a, a courier. The way Obama was communicating was they had a guy who would carry messages back and forth physically from in and out of this compound, and that was the only way that you could communicate with Obama was through this messenger. And they, uh, thanks to uh, uh, interrogations of people held in Guantanamo and some of the covert prisons that we were putting uh, captured Al-Qaeda senior people in, uh, they found out about this courier and that's how they were able to track him down. Uh, if you're a uh, Obama supporter, you'll really like the book because the, the author's a little hard on President George W. Bush and he absolutely slavishly worships President Obama. In fact, it's a little off-putting at times how much that Mr. Bergen just gushes over President Obama. Uh, and uh, he's supposed to be an objective reporter. But if you're a conservative like me and you really don't politically agree with our president, he's a New York Times reporter, so he has to love Obama. That's a job requirement that he's got. He wouldn't be working there. He wouldn't have access to the administration like he did if he didn't wasn't a, a member of Obama's team. But he still does a pretty good job of covering it. He's not completely, he doesn't whitewash some of the mistakes the Obama administration made. And he, one thing I, I will give him credit for, he does explain how George Bush came to believe that there was uh, not just George Bush, but almost everybody in the American government, including a lot of Democrats, including Hillary Clinton and John Kerry, uh, came to believe there were WMDs in Iraq. He explains how that happened. Uh, and how the chain of mistakes that led to that. And so the, the people who said, you know, Bush lied about WMDs, uh, he does, Mr. Bergen does not agree with that and says so in the book. So I'll give him credit for that. So if you're a conservative, just kind of speed through the Obama worshiping paragraphs. There are not that many of them, but they're in there because it's still a good, valuable book. I wish there wasn't so much classified in it. Uh, I'm sitting in my lazy boy or driving to work because I'm listening to the audio version sitting in my nice comfortable car nobody's shooting at me and they went for weeks trying to decide to make this raid once it was pretty clear to in 2020 hindsight that, Ob that Obama was in this compound and they at one point I nearly came out I nearly screamed because they said they started thinking about and this is in both the books I reviewed they started thinking about a B-2 bomber raid that would drop 32,000 pound bombs on this house well, I used to work in a live bombing rage. I've seen 2,000 pound bombs drop, live ones, and explode. I've dropped them myself, to be honest. Uh, but when you drop them, you don't really see what happens. You have to be on the ground to really appreciate it. 30, 2,000 pound bombs in a neighborhood? Good God! First of all, you just atomize whatever was there. There'd be no way to say who was in that compound forever. And second of all, some of the bombs would go stupid and hit houses containing innocent Pakistanis. <laughs> it's a stupid idea. And I, it, hor it was horrifying. They even, I guess they have to look at all the possibilities, but that was pretty horrifying. So we're, they're talking about all these meetings they're having in D.C. to try to decide whether to do the raid or not. And, uh, Joe Biden is babbling and talking like an idiot. You know, that's, just, that's our vice president. He's just like that. Uh... I guess he's valuable. He said not to go on the raid. It was too risky, so Obama did it. I think one of the useful things about President, uh, Vice President Biden, is that President Obama's got a guy there that you know 
uh, it's kind of like uh, George Cassandra, Cassandra uh, whatever his name was on uh, Jerry Steinfeld. You know, whatever this guy says is wrong. So if you just do the opposite of what Biden wants, you're probably better off. But anyway, I'm sorry, getting a little political there. I retract that. It's a good book. Uh, it, it really goes well with the, you got the micro view if you read the uh, Mark Owen book, uh, uh, No Easy Day, and you match that with this book, The uh, Manhunt, The Tenure Hunt for Bin Laden. You get a real good picture of uh, our government working, both civilian, uh, political leaders, and uh, military working at their best. It'll make you read both these books, it'll make you proud to be an American. And if you're not American, it'll make you proud to have American friends. This is Jim, and I live in Texas.